We're talking with Tom Vitor from Pod Save America. They're going to be at the beautiful Orpheum Theater Friday night, the 19th, 7 p.m. is showtime. Tom, it's great to have you on the John and Gordy Show. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. So tell us a little bit for yeah. people that are not familiar with the podcast and, and your live show, what, what can they expect Friday night? Well, so, you know, we are uh, three, four, actually, people who the hosts who formerly worked for Barack Obama and the Obama administration. We all thought we wanted to leave politics and escape D.C. and do other things with our lives. And then the 2016 election happened and we all were racked with enormous guilt that we had not done more to try to uh, affect the outcome. So we started this company, Crooked Media, and a podcast, Pod Save America, where we're trying to help people understand what's happening in the world, but then also what they can do about it if they're worried and they want to, you know, volunteer or knock on doors or otherwise get involved. So we bring a bunch of people together. We will talk about uh, national politics. So the Republican convention will be happening this week. I'm sure we'll also talk about the horrifying events in Pennsylvania uh, over the weekend, Joe Biden's campaign. But we try to have a lot of fun, even when uh, the news is dark, because it's often quite dark these days. Do you get any questions from the audience? Yeah, we love to do Q&A if we can. We also try to play games and bring people up and get, and get folks involved. So, um, you know, the audience is the best part. Basically, yeah. it's a bunch of political junkies. Um, it can feel like a you know progressive revival sometimes when we're in deeply red states. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you about uh, uh, your position. I've seen the position of both your other uh, partners on this, uh, the two Johns. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the interesting thing is that you have taken the position, I believe, that uh, Biden maybe should step down and there should be a replacement. Am I correct with that? I mean, I think what all of us, I think everybody who watched the debate came away feeling pretty shaken. Mm -hmm. um, I think Joe Biden himself would admit it was not a great performance. And, you know, some of the subsequent interviews he did on ABC News or MSNBC to try to clean it up weren't great either. And so I think the question is, uh, would someone else at the top of the ticket give us a better chance at winning? I believe the answer is yes. Uh, there's some polls out today that shows Biden only up three in Virginia and mm -hmm. losing in Pennsylvania, which is just a must win state. So that's where that anxiety came from um so that's an honest you know people are very mad at us for having that point of view um getting called traitors on twitter and i think you know a lot of people uh somehow decided that loyalty to party is more important than you know loyalty to country and really thinking about the outcome of the election but that's that's where we've been but with what happened over the last weekend uh that has is kind of a uh, uh something that no one could foresee happen yeah. So therefore, trying to replace the current incumbent president who has the power to get elected, replacing that individual with somebody who doesn't have a, a, a funding source yet, uh, some ability to uh, you know get out there and, and campaign. Uh, yeah, and then, of course, we don't know what all the mysterious, uh, mysterious attacks will be in regards to who is picked. Mm -hmm. And what will happen after that? And then you have this this boost, this bump, possible bump uh, from the uh, events that happened over the weekend. I mean, is, isn't it a dangerous time to start or keep talking about replacing Biden? I think every path has political risk. Um, you know, again, the poll I mentioned earlier from The New York Times of Pennsylvania and Virginia voters found that 60 percent of Democrats in those states uh, believe President Biden is too old so that that's sort of the kind of underlying concern that i think you see in in the electorate that's leading to um his challenges in the horse race numbers mm -hmm. um i think the most likely alternative would be kamala harris she would have a plug and play operation with the the biden campaign in terms of funding and staffing and infrastructure oh, okay. that's been set up they would share um, that they would share the the campaign funds yeah i mean i think i think most uh, campaign finance experts believe she could essentially just take over the keys to that right. operation um the other alternative that's been put forward is the idea of the democratic party hosting kind of a mini primary at the convention because mm -hmm. basically what you need to have happen was for uh, some candidates to come up, uh, maybe, you know, do town halls, maybe give speeches, maybe have a debate. And they're auditioning for the 4,000 or so delegates who will be at the convention. 
uh, in Chicago and then will formally nominate the president. Now, that that's like the key here. Joe Biden hasn't been formally nominated yet. Um, if he had been already, I would absolutely not be calling for a right. new leadership at right. the top of the ticket. It's just because the debate happened before that process. He's, ca- he's actually called for challengers. At kind the convention. Of. Well, I mean, kind of, yeah. notionally, but like he won all these, he won the delegates through the primary process who mm-hmm. are in some cases legally pledged to him. Right. Are you already talking about what to do in regards to uh, uh, the events over the last weekend, the assassination attempt, or is that part of something you've already discussed with uh, the two Johns? No, I mean, I think all of us, you know, we're watching the news over the weekend uh, with horror. Um there's no place in this country for political violence. I don't care how much you dislike a political opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's immoral and unacceptable. And frankly, political violence tends to lead to more political violence. You know, this is not a cycle that anyone should ever want to start. Exactly. Um, so I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm glad that President Trump is OK. I hope there will be some pretty serious questions and investigations into how the Secret Service allowed a sniper to take a position only 140 yards from a presidential candidate that is like un, unacceptable. Um, but yeah, no, I, I wish him well. And I hope, you know, we can get back to just regular political discourse without any sort of threats of violence anywhere from anybody. Yeah. So you say you take some questions from the audience as well. Um, how, how long is this tour uh, scheduled? Well, so we just go out, you know, uh, a, a couple weekends, Per month basically oh, yeah. uh, okay. go to various cities right. so we're going to go to milwaukee spend a day or two uh there uh just sort of seeing sights and sounds from the republican convention and then go sure. up to madison um and uh uh do the show there and then we'll come back uh to los angeles be home for a while and then head out to chicago for the democratic convention all right tom vitor thank you uh from pod save america going to be in town at the orpheum theater thanks guys All right. Thank you.